Younger artists and, and artists that are, um, are just starting out, lots of things. Um, at this point in my career, I can say a lot of things. You know, you would ask me this 20 years ago, I would have been like, I don't know. But I would say that the, 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 the number one thing or the most important thing to me is, you know, as you develop as an artist or as you get more passionate about your work, and maybe do more professional things and get more notoriety, is try to remain humble. You know, every artist you meet has um, information and insight from their career that can also inspire you to be a better artist. So in building artist community, we need to just have dialogue. And with dialogue, you become a better artist. That's, that's what I feel. So I think remaining humble is a good thing because, because you learn more. So that's my main reason, I think, for being humble. Um, other things I would say is a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. A lot of practice and, and also being an artist is taking a lot of risk, many risks. That's the, the reason why when we started painting graffiti, from painting, uh, when I started painting graffiti, you had to paint graffiti illegally. There was no sanctioned place to go and do graffiti. Like today, this, you, can, you can find uh, what we call gray area places or places that they allow you to paint. You know, um, if, if in graffiti gallery, you can come here and say, hey, you know, I'm trying to start out as an artist. You got a space on the wall and you guys might say oh yeah you know like go around the, the corner there's a space right there there's a little nook in the wall you know have at it right so you know to 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 get back to your question my thing was like we in in the beginning it's not like i wanted to paint i didn't want to paint illegally as i remember in the early because you heard so many negative things that happened to to writers that were painting because you always had to go out at night in the dark and you had to go to places that wasn't very considered very good areas because that meant less police so there was a lot of obstacles that you had to deal with um, so it was it was kind of a, a intimidating thing um, but at some point you, you 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 know in anything in life you have to take the jump so I took the risk and got, got with some buddies and, and started going out. And, and, and from those early guys, got with some older guys that was better, had more experience, which, which was great because, because uh, all around it was great to be with a more experienced uh, writer. And I learned more quicker because these guys were more experienced, even though it was, they were only two or three years older. But when you're, when you're, when you're 13 or 14, and some guy is 17. That's, that's, that's a, a pretty huge gap. Um, so, you know, um, you know learn, we're learning to take risk. I feel like in, in doing graffiti, uh, in my art career, I've always, you know, when I, when I feel my, in, you know, in my gut, it's time to make a move to do something like, okay, now I'm gonna do fine art. Or I was invited to Europe in, in uh, my first time in 1991. And I get a letter from a European guy and he says, oh, you're invited to a festival. We'd like to invite you. Invite, what do you mean invite? Yeah. You know? So I wrote back, hey, what, what, uh, what would I be doing there? And he said, you'd be just doing what you do in the Bronx. The only thing is people will be watching you. Because back then, no one would really, I mean, yeah, sure, if you were painting in the daytime and people saw you painting in the daytime, they'd watch you. Like, the first time, like I mentioned Rolio before, he was an older writer from my neighborhood. I hung out with his younger brother, and that's how I got to know who he was. And he had a lot of works on the subways. Long story short, one day, I come out to the block to play stickball with, with, with his brother Vince, and Rolio was painting a box truck on the block in broad daylight. In 1983, there was a crowd of people around him, watching. And this is New York City, okay? Tons of things are always happening in New York. But even back then, you didn't physically see anyone. You wouldn't see the process. 
All you saw was the finished work rolling by on the subways. That's why people were in amazed at what what is this? What's going on? People had questions. But if you didn't if you didn't know these guys and, and most of these guys, like myself later on, because it was looked down upon, you didn't really if you wasn't in the community of writing, you didn't really speak about it. Hmm. So pe people tend to, you know, your, your, your critics were your people that went to work every day on the subway. You know, they would see the work roll in the station. And you had some people that loved the work. You had a lot of people that hate the work, hmm. right? But nonetheless, your critics are right there. And you could be right there next to them, standing there going, and they're wondering who, who did this? but you're standing right next to them on the platform, waiting for the subway, just like they're waiting to, to go to your destination. So, so yeah, you know, um, I, I feel like, you know, you gotta, you gotta take risk out there. You gotta take risk. Risk is what's gonna do it. Practice is, 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 is one of the most important things. Um, and trying to find, uh, a, you know, someone that would mentor you is, was also a big thing back then. So if, if you could, find that person that would take the time to show you some things. Even if they don't physically show you how to paint, just, again, conversation, dialogue amongst artists, you can learn so much.